So we each, gosh, Lord, we probably lived everywhere in this in the world, all over this country. You know. Mandy and her her people have been in the same place for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. And um, I share this with you. And she's got much to share with us a little bit about the way they preserve some things. Okay, how they, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I asked her this afternoon, I said, um, as an elder, she'll be 71 next Tuesday, by the way. I did not know this at one, one, after I had started living with it, that um, every picture you see on every billboard, billboard and every brochure is this lady doing the following. For 34 years it's been on, for 36 years now. And, uh, but, if anybody carries the, the grace and the majesty and the imperialism of a, of, a, of a beautiful people, it's this lady. But anyway, I, in, in talking today, I asked her, I, as I have said to you folks, and mentioned to her the Lee Brown tape and the Holy Prophecies, that I believe very strongly that the prophets of this land are the ones we've got to listen to. And I asked her, I said, man, do you get visions of this? And she said, yes, many. And specifically, well, what do you see here? And she said, you know, we'll have an earthquake. But I hear this type of thing from all the others that I deal with, that I, our paths cross, that are from other parts of the country. Like the, my Oshadanabi friend, the Ojibwe of the Northeast, or my Lakota people. I, it just amazes me. And this is not doom and gloom. It's a wonderful time because as she and I talked about, it's not only the scriptural time of tribulation, it's in the, in the Indian way, it's the pure time of purification. But we've got to, we've got to get this right and like the Wanda. And it's amazing to me how spirit keeps bringing all these people together. Okay, I mean a lot of lives are now beginning to, to come together. And they're teaching each other. We're learning from each other. So anyway, I'm very honored uh, for Mandy to be here. I, I would encourage you each uh, because she is a craftsman of over 40 years in, in pop. Uh, museums are coming to her now. They're, they're going to feature her in a magazine and a film soon. And, uh, but this lady here has probably touched thousands and thousands of lives. Yeah. But I really encourage you to take a look at her pottery. That stuff sitting in there is usually worth about $40, $35, in museums and this kind of thing, or shops, whatever. I have sat many, many a night while this gracious creature would sit there with that old piece of board across her lap, a big old clump of, of clay, and just make something gorgeous out of it. Okay? And she can do about, what is it, two dozen and a half a day? About that. I mean, it's just amazing. And, and, but you know, she's putting that love and that spirit into each one of them. But anyway, Miss Mandy, if you would just share with us some of the things we talked about earlier about, and then feel free to ask questions, okay? Because that sort of gives her feel for it how to do things, but like we were talking about um, how, how you preserve things, like a cabbage. Well, um, he asked me about how we put up our stuff way back to the, our grandmothers before when my, before I was born, when I was, I mean, after I was, before I was married. Well, my mom and daddy used to farm a lot, and he raised corn, raised taters, and cabbage, and and cane, he made surface sale. And then whenever the corn got dry, he cut the tops. And then in November, then he gathered the corn, put it in the crib. And then when we have uh, taters and cabbage, when we dig them out, then mom and daddy gather them up, we all have to pile them up. Well, he'll go out there in the end of the field, in the garden, put some grass and weeds all together, not dig a ditch or something, just pile it around the dirt. And then he'll tell us, bring the taters down, put them on top of his weeds. So we'll put them on top of the weeds and just pile them up. Well, he'll go out there and get some more weeds and pile them up again and cover them up with the weeds on the taters. And after that, then you can get that dirt, piled it up, put back that thick dirt on top. Then he get some kind of board and lay it on top. And that's where he kept his taters through the winter, after he beat them out of the ground. 
and they stay dry. And when you dig them, you just have to make a hole down the bottom enough to get your taters out with your one hand, mm -hmm. not let the air go in there. Because if the air goes in there, it'll make them fall, you know, where the air hits them. And then the cabbage, now, she used to make Daddy dig a ditch about that far. And she'd get that cabbage and stick it down in the hole and let the roots up in, in the air. She turned it over. And then she'd cover it with her grass. Just this old grass that grows in the field. And then put the dirt over it. And that's where she kept her cabbage. And when she got ready to eat, want cabbage in the wintertime, January, we got then dig it up like cabbage to cook. And, and it would swell back up to its original size, this one. And we'd done the same way with it, turnip greens. You know, when they got heads, you can bury them in the dirt, and you can dig them up in January, and there'd be some sprouts on them. And they're good to eat when they be digged out of the ground. And now that's the way we kept our food way back. And then uh, when we have a, uh, they kill a hog in summertime, my mama would get a big, wash pot you've seen i guess anybody have seen them big wash pot they used to have way back she put all that meat in there and build a part under it and she keeps steering it and finally when it gets hot it gets lighter to steer and it starts cooking that meat and they cook all that meat up and then she get all that meat out and drain that grease out and put it in the jar and keep the fresh meat for the spring and that's the way my daddy and mom kept the meat and then in wintertime, they had spring houses. They'd lay the meat out there and put it up. And then we dry cabbage. I guess anybody had not know what cab dry cabbage is. You can dry the cabbage and strain it up in the strain and hang it up in the house and it dries and it turns brown when it dries. Then you boil it when you start cooking it until it gets real done. It takes quite a while for it to cook whenever it's dry but you just take about just about that much to cook because it swells after it's been dry and we we do that well i still do that too myself put my cabbage up on cabbage you do it probably to be dry before just the leaves you take so each, each leaves, leaves off and spring uh. it up like you would an apple mm -hmm. so like leather just like leather, 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 leather bridge yeah. 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 And then we fix the letter breaches. When, when she's putting the, uh, when you put the cabbage in the ground, she said you uh, dug a ditch and, uh, and put the cabbage. Did you put uh, uh, grass under the cabbage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he put the and grass. Then, and then grass over the cabbage? Yeah. Leaving the roots out? You let the roots stick up. And then, and then you, did you cover the roots too when you, when you covered it? Yeah, you, you covered it all. Uh, uh -huh. See, it, it stays, uh, cool in there where he can put all that grass on top and then put the dirt on it just like we do the taters to cover them up that's the way he used to put it up for well, you need to dig the ditch where where there's no uh where the water doesn't put stand no yeah he'll have a ditch there so you see that dirt's piled up and that water runs down on the side it never gets in there just like uh putting your taters up too <clears throat> So you dig the ditch on the high place then where the water would not be, the ground yeah. the water would not run. Uh -huh. Like uh, I'll get potatoes when I put them up, dig the little ditch so the water won't go down in there. But they be that much from the ground when I put them on top, top of that ground so the water won't come in there. Yeah. So I remember, I remember filling up yeah, that's the way that uh, our old people done that way back. Whenever they put things up, they didn't have to buy anything when they was, uh, they used to farm. And nowadays you can't see nobody doing all that. Even my people are, are for, forgot to farm, making a uh, garden or nothing. They just a few people that's farmed up my way. That's, you know, taught, you know, how they do the work. Another thing that we used to do, uh, we, we, uh, I was raised over in eastern North Carolina, where mm -hmm. they raised the food cure and tobacco. Yeah. Uh, they would, uh, toward the end of the tobacco season, when they dug the potatoes, uh, they would throw the potatoes in there inside this barn and, and heat it up a little bit. And this kind of dried the, uh, 
skin style. So um, and they, they just leave them there. They get in the barn on the ground. And, and they, that, that works too. Well, my, my daddy has to leave, the, leave them out in the sun a while till they all dry up good, you know. See, they wet when you get them out of the ground. He let them lay there till the next day, then he'll bear them so they can be really dry. And if you bear them right away, he said they'll rot, you know, yeah. or they damp. And that's the way he used to put his potatoes up. And uh, all that, uh, what we had to do, it, it was... I was thinking uh, when somebody asked me, how do you like, would you like to go back on the way back, or do you like it now like it is this time of year? And I just told them, no, I'd rather go back where when I was a little kid. It wasn't uh, as bad like it is now. And we were all happy. And I said, then way back, 